see. It looks like it's actually a bright day outside, but it is currently raining again. Now, I'm not gonna complain about that because we need the water. But the only problem with that is that we're currently planting out our orchard mm. and we were hoping to plant a few trees today. It is, uh, what is it? It's the start of August and for us here in the Southern Hemisphere, we are coming into uh, spring. So we've got all these trees in pots and we need to plant them before um, spring. Uh, we want to get them in the ground and give them a little bit um, of a head start. So what I've been doing is uh, with Stephen's help, I sat down and um, worked out the trees that we have and the ones that I do want to get that we don't have yet. Um, and I did a little bit, bit of research on their size and height and, um, and width just to make sure that when we do plant these trees, they're in the right spot because I don't want to have to move these. So obviously the smaller trees, we're in the Southern Hemisphere, the smaller trees are towards the north and the higher, the taller trees are uh, towards the south so they don't get shaded. Um, they're in a fairly open spot, so there shouldn't be any problems with getting enough sunlight. We will have to build some fences around these and try to um, protect them from the kangaroos. So, uh, yeah, so at the moment we're just getting started and uh, we're planning all this out. So as you can see, um, this is the grid uh, of the trees. And what I did uh, was I um, got what we're actually planting and on the back, the height and the width. So I tried to keep all the citrus together, stone fruits, um, apples uh, together, as close as I could. Uh, obviously there's, it's not gonna be perfect. Um, and I put the bigger ones obviously at the back. So I tried to place them all together and then I flipped them over to see whether the heights worked. Uh, we've got one uh, little spot up there that doesn't have a tree. Uh, we do have some trees at my parents' place and we're currently not able to get there to, to see what they are. So, so we've laid it all out here. Uh, there's a couple that have, I don't have. I don't have the pears yet. Uh, I don't have the mandarin um, and the cherry. So I do have to get them. And at the moment it's a good time to get them because they will be bare rooted. So the plan is to get these trees, put them in their spot, see if it all works and see how much area we actually need in between each tree. Um, I did actually cut these to a kind of four metre radius, so this is to scale. Uh, so it should help, fingers crossed. And if it could stop raining just for a couple of hours, that would be fantastic. When planning out this uh, orchard, we actually have to take into consideration something that's not actually here yet. Um, if you've been following, you know we've only built half our house. So I'm just trying to spin around. We've just put some posts in the ground, or some pegs, sorry. Uh, so we know where the rest of the house is gonna be. There's another one oh, just there. So we had to take into consideration where the rest of the house is going before we put the orchard in because I don't want to put um, these trees in and then realise that we have to shift them because the house is going to be in the way. So uh, as you can see, this section here is going to be kind of duplicated over here. So it'll be a, a U-shaped house. So it'll come out from that there and I might spin you around, it's a bit easy. So there's a walkway in between these two buildings and we're going to replicate that just here. So there'll be a little walkway and then you can see this post over here is where the side of the house will be all the way up to here across to here and back to Oh, let's focus that one over there so when we're laying out this orchard we have to make sure 
that it's far enough away from the house so it doesn't get too much shading and the trees aren't too close to the proposed house so got to take these things into consideration so Stephen and I are out here measuring up a few things and this is where the orchard will go. So just getting set up to um, work out where the fence is going to go and of course we like to have it nice and square so we've got our back fence lined up along here we need to make sure that the side fence is running at 90 degrees and the easiest way to do that is to get some help from Mr Pythagoras so if you can set up a triangle that has four meters on one side three meters on the other your hypotenuse or your diagonal is five if you can get that set up there exactly as it is there three four five then that point is 90 degrees to the back line and we're nice and square simple maths So what Julianne's doing here is this um, apricot tree's come out of the pot and it's been in there for a bit over 12 months and as you can see the roots are actually wrapping around on the inside of the pot starting to become what we call root bound so she's removing the outside root material and that will then encourage it to regrow and sprout off in all directions rather than continue to cycle around in a circle which will eventually be very unhealthy for the tree and possibly kill it. As you can see a lot of the fibrous material there and you need to get it back to a point like, like pruning the branches, you prune it back and then it will reshoot further back. Um, we put these in a good sized pot so there's a healthy root ball in the center of the pot we just need to make sure that the edges have are healthy and cut back and ready to grow that looks right looks great As you can see with this tree it's uh, not the best there's quite a few crossing over uh, the best tip I can give you is to actually prune these back as long as you've got a main leader to an outside bud basically like chopping a rose so cut it on a bit of an angle so no water sits on it I know this looks harsh but in the end it will be a good thing for the plant so as you can see we've still got two main leaders and these will just shoot off 
here uh, and create better limbs. You don't want crossing over branches. They will rub together and they can uh, cause disease. So that's the best way. It's on a bit of a slope, water will run off it and it shouldn't rot. A week has passed. We've got most of the plants in. We're just gonna give you a quick tour of what we've done. Uh, we're still missing a few uh, trees at the moment and they're on order. Uh, but we'll run you through and show you what we've done. We still have to mulch the bottom of each tree and we have then got the project of putting a fence all the way around this obviously as mentioned previously we do have kangaroos here and uh, they will like to chew on the new growth when the the leaves are coming through so we have uh, apricot here we have a couple of pears one here uh, and another one beside that uh, the reason we have two is this is a Williams pear uh, some self pollinate but it is better to have two so this is a Williams pear and that's a Nashi pear which will help cross pollinate them hence the reason they're so close together here we have two plums right beside each other you can see this one's got buds on it already up the back we have Tahitian lime we have two Eureka lemons we're waiting for our citrus and mandarin to arrive we take a wander up here we've got a white flesh nectarine here and a yellow flesh nectarine there and we have a spot up there that is actually blank I'm not sure what to plant there yet so we'll have to go through the list here we have a quince tree as you can see it's got lots and lots of buds on this one already we've put some slow release fertilizer in the bottom of this organic fertilizer we did use uh, a lot of dirt that has compost aged manure and everything but that's just a bit of a boost over here we have a couple of peach trees of different types of peaches because you can't have enough peaches ignore that one there <laughs> that's our fig tree I've just put that in the ground at the moment it's not going in this orchard it's far too big a tree for this orchard so it will be going in another location we're still waiting for another cherry we've got one cherry there and right here we've got an apple so we've got pink lady apple here and a granny smith here so we have a red apple and a green apple we still have a few holes to fill obviously as soon as those plants arrive we also have this almond tree that we are planting it won't be going in the fruit orchard it will have its own spot and as you can see it's attracting the bees already I'm just being very very careful because I'm actually allergic to bees so I'm just staying out of their way you can see so that's awesome it's a beautiful plant this one we also have a few raspberry passion fruit and strawberries that we have to plant um, and we also have our vegetable patch to get get going so if you've got any suggestions on what we should put in that one hole that we haven't got a tree for pop a comment down below uh, remember we're in the southern hemisphere but we can pretty much grow anything here uh, so that's the orchard tour in the next video we uh, on the orchard we will be putting up the fence so not sure if that'll be the next video but it's a future project which we'll have to get done very very soon one little tip that I have got for you is when you're digging the holes for the trees wider is always better than deeper the roots will want to go that way and not particularly downwards they want to establish uh, their root system uh, the root system will be as wide as the canopy so just take into consideration when you're digging the hole make it a wide hole we hope you've enjoyed the orchard tour and seeing what we're planting here don't forget to follow us along so you can see the journey of putting up the fences and getting these things to uh, to fruit don't forget to hit the thumbs up and the subscribe button and the little notification bell to get some updates of when we post next. Thanks guys and have a great day.